You've done it all throughout your career. What was it about shifting gears and this character in particular that resonated with you? Um, I think the thing I loved most about it was that uh, it was a love story, but it was really more about these two characters sort of finding themselves and then realizing that they needed each other to be the best versions of themselves or that the other kind of brought out the best version of themselves. I think it's a an unconventional romance in that way. And that's what I really liked is that the main focus wasn't necessarily the romance, but it was inherently romantic because it was so grounded and real. And I, mm. I really loved that about it. It was so much more interesting to me to tell a story about people who are exes and people who had grown up together and people who had a lot of history and a lot of complicated past than maybe people who had met for the first time and everything was just rosy and great. This was this was more complicated and it felt a lot more grounded because of it. Great answer. And your character is making her mark in a dominated industry and paving the way for other women as well which I think will resonate with so many viewers what did you learn from playing Jess and what do you hope that others take away from her inspiring journey I mean I think I think it was no coincidence that this movie is part of Hallmark's Make Her Mark program and yeah. Crystal's first uh, directorial debut I think um, the program is doing amazing things for breaking down barriers and helping getting more females behind the the cameras, especially at Hallmark, where we have such a female um, audience base. Yeah, what did I learn from her? I think um, I think this movie explores legacy a lot and the pressures that come with having something to live up to that somebody you love so much. And in, in Jess's case, uh, I well, in Jess and Luke, it was their fathers. Um, but also their grandfathers and 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 these family businesses that had come through generations. Um, I think what I learned from Jess is that there are ways to exist within legacy and living up to perhaps whether it be a family legacy or a reputation you've built throughout your career. Um, there are ways to have yourself show up in that too. That you're not just inheriting something from somebody else, and it's not a kind of pre-described uh way of being but it's more something where you have to find who you are within that otherwise it will never feel genuine to yourself and i think we we see that with both luke and jess mm -hmm. and jess also has such a beautiful journey in the film where it's about finding strength and vulnerability and stepping out of her comfort zone and you brought so much depth to that as an actress how did you create the space for yourself to tackle that emotional arc particularly when she's discussing the loss of her mother I think the script was really, really well written. And I think uh, under Crystal's direction as well, I think working for a director who is an actor and mm -hmm. who works with actors so much really helps, you know, because there's always a risk with movies of making things like it has to feel really grounded in the moment, but it doesn't have to feel debilitating to the character at the same time. Like they need to be in a place where they're ready to continue mm -hmm. moving forward. Um, and so that pain is still really, really real and really there, but it's also something that they are working through and can handle and it can be really active for them. And I think, I think just having Crystal to work with and, and bouncing ideas off of her and just trying to pitch the arc of that particular storyline so that it felt all of those things, but it was still something that could propel Jess as opposed to hold her back was really important. I know, similar to Crystal, you're also a multifaceted storyteller. How have your experiences behind the camera impacted the way that you now approach your work on screen and vice versa? Uh, I think working as a writer and a director um, has just made me want to show up that much more fully, that much more prepared as an actor, because I just know how hard it is. I, 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 you know, I always knew, but it really does take like doing it to really have it sink in. I always say with directing, it's like everything is your problem, even if it's not your fault. And um, it, I think it just as an actor, it just makes me want to show up even more for these directors and give them everything they need and be really collaborative and really open and conscious of the energy that I bring on set every day. Because uh, mm. the director is really just managing so many people and so many different personalities at the same time. Um, and it can often be really lonely and isolating job directing. I think one of the things we don't talk about with directing a lot is you're kind of like alone in a vacuum. Um, mm. You are your, your own team of one. You have all the people who are helping you and working with you, but you are your own kind of creative funnel. And that can be really overwhelming and isolating at times. And I think just wanting to be the director's ally and be like, I'm here for you. Like, what do we do to make this better? How do we do it together? 
Uh, so it's just propelled me to work harder as an actor, show up more prepared, show up with more ideas, offer more, um, and, and really like bring good energy. Cause that person yeah. is having a really hard day pretty much always. <laughs> That's such an incredible insight about kind of the loneliness about being a director. You know, Jess also has this belief that the best ideas come when you throw convention out the window and just go for it. What's been that moment in your own career where you've done something similar? I recently had an opportunity to co-write and co-direct with a very good friend of mine, Melanie Scrifano, a movie for Tubi. Uh, we got our idea greenlit in June and our script was due in September and we were we went to camera in December. Uh, so uh, we had never written a feature film script before either of us. It was very new territory for us. And um, we had never co-directed before and uh, it, we really didn't have time to overthink. We had no time to second guess, to dwell. And I think it was the greatest blessing of that project is the fact that it was like, we didn't have time to doubt ourselves. We yeah. had to just believe in ourselves and go and throw convention out the window um, because uh, we were doing it. Like the train had left the station and we were on it. Uh, and I think that was just one of, one of the greatest blessings of my career is the lack of time allowed to doubt myself um, and uh what a great learning lesson that was of just sometimes you know blind naivety is actually like the most gracious gift that you can <laughs> ask for as a creator as anyone who's attempting something new because um the more you know the more fear is present and uh yeah, yeah. that's definitely a very good example of that for me Great answer. I can't wait to see that. You know, there's also yeah. this really standout moment in the film where Jess talks about how her favorite memories have a connection to the different cars in her life. Mm -hmm. When you look back at this filming experience, what is the moment that will stand out for you? I mean, one of the most beautiful moments of this experience was I got to be on set with my husband, who plays Wayne LaRouche, who's the host of the Classic Car Show, and my son, our two and a half year old son. Um, and just getting to be there with them. And my parents were also there. Uh, it was a real, like, bring the circus, bring the family on this one. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really special when you get to have your family. Oftentimes I'm going away for work and I'm away from my family for maybe a month or two months. It's really hard. It's very emotional. And um, it, getting to have them there, while it does come with its challenges when you live with your whole family in a hotel, <laughs> um, it also is just like such a beautiful memory. And I was also pregnant when we were filming this. So it was like a lot of, it was just really big for our whole family, all these moments put together. Um, uh, so yeah, it's a special one. It's definitely yeah. one we will look back on as a family, as a true marker of passage of time, a true moment in our lives. But, you know, family is such a cornerstone of, of Hallmark as well. And then yeah. this, as you were saying earlier, this project is part of Hallmark's Make Her Mark mentorship program. Who are the mentors in your own life who have shaped the storyteller that you are today? Oh, that's such a great question. It makes me almost like emotional. Oh, my gosh. I've had so many amazing, amazing people in my life um, who have tough loved me through a lot of self-doubt. The first person that's coming to mind is a man named Reiner Nowak, who... Um, We'll probably never get to see this or know that this movie is coming out, but he was my high school drama teacher and uh, he was uh, unapolog unapologetically himself as a queer man working in the Catholic school board system, which in and of itself is a very complex um, position to be with, to be in. Um, I learned so much about being unapologetically yourself and being brave in your knowledge of yourself through him. But he was also the one who cast me in things that I didn't think I could do. I remember he cast me in this really big role and I went to him and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm feeling a lot of pressure. And he said, well, you better figure it out. And uh, just instilled in me this like no nonsense approach of tough love that I really needed. And I think I've mm. kept that forward with me in, in my career of, you know, say yes before you feel 100% ready because you'll never feel 100% ready. And um, be open to the miracles that can kind of happen through stepping outside of your comfort zone. And I think it ties beautifully back with shifting gears and Jess. She doesn't want to be on a TV show. She yeah. hates being in front of the camera, but she gets there out of necessity. And I think really beautiful things happen when you are pushed outside of your comfort zone and not given an opportunity to back away or let fear get in. Um, so that's what that's what Mr. Nowak 
taught me and he's the first person that come has come to mind, but I've had so many people believe in me. So many uh, female directors push me to start mm-hmm. directing a uh, amazing team that I work with at uh, a production company called Vortex. who have done three movies with and gave me my first directing gig. Um, my executive who gave us clickbait with Tubi, like there's so many people who have taken a chance on me and believed in me when I probably didn't believe in myself as fully. And, uh, they've been huge. We all need those people. And, and I hope I can be that person for, for other people in their careers too. Yeah, you've definitely done that. I got one final question for you outside of this project. It was also recently announced that we're getting a white on a movie. Is there anything that you can tease oh. about that? Oh gosh, I really can't. My lips have been so <laughs> tightly sealed on it. All that, well, I have my red hair and I just got back last week and we, everything has been filmed. And uh, I think just the whole cast, we're so excited for that fan base to see this movie. It is such a love letter to the Erpers and to uh, the story and the show and the characters. And it really felt like we never left. It's been two and a half years since we finished shooting the series, but it it felt like it had been a hiatus and we were back after a few months, you know? And mm. I just think that speaks to the beauty of the story that our showrunner Emily has written and um, how true it is to the characters because it just felt like putting on like an old shoe but in like the best most comforting way 